يا كاشف الضر والبلوى تباركت ربي عالم السر والنجوى يا أهلنا في ليبيا لقد اشتدت بكم الخطوب وربي معكم فلا تظن به الظنون أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء قاله سيد الأنبياء يبتل المرء على حسب دينه فإن كان في دينه صلبا اشتد بلاؤه وإن كان في دينه رقة ابتلي على حسب دينه وهكذا فما يبرح البلاء بالعبد حتى يتركه يمشي على الأرض ما عليه خطيئة الله أكبر يا أهلنا في ليبيا أليس الله بكاف عبدا يا رب تقبل موتاهم في الشهداء وداوي جرحاهم يا ذا العزة والثناء لله ما أخذ وله ما أعطى وكل شيء عنده بأجل مسمى فاصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون Dear audience worldwide Few days ago you've witnessed the flood that inundated parts of Libya And before that, Morocco. And before that, Turkey. And before that, Afghanistan. And before that, India. And before that, Brazil. All these places witness unprecedented earthquakes and flood. In Libya, the casualties and people that passed, approximately 11,300. In Turkey, 50,783. In Morocco, 2,901. In Afghanistan, 1,036. In Indonesia, 334. In the flood of Afghanistan, 182. In India, 192. In Brazil, 334. And in Pakistan, 1,739. All the people that passed away, either in the flood or in those earthquakes, they had their own plans. Some of them just came out of their offices while others are going home. Others were praying. Some people with their families having dinner. But at any given moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests his slaves. They wake up hoping to see the next day, but they open their eyes in their graves. This could be any of us at any given moment. We hope that the Muslims that passed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take them as martyrs and shuhada. And those who are wounded, we pray that he takes care of their wounds and reward the family that are affected by that. Allahumma ameen. One might ask, why those poor people living in those poor neighborhoods, people who can't find what to eat, people that when they eat this meal, they don't know when is the next meal coming. Why those poor people, poor children going through this turmoil when people that are wealthy and they are going against God and they are bringing singers cursing God. Why Allah is not inundating those places? Why the places, the Muslim countries that are opposing proper hijab and some even went far as opposing niqab by saying that get none do with the deen get none do with the deen it's just some cultural baggage that some people came the point is not whether it's for or not the case is you are attacking the one that is trying to follow the full steps of their mothers the mothers of the believers you are attacking them while those who are half naked almost no clothes on you get none do with them you're not saying anything about them. So one of you might say, why Allah is leaving those people? Why Allah is leaving those places intact and then testing those who are feeble, weak, unstable, and poor? Brother, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Sa'ad ibn Waqqas asked him, Ayyu nasi ashaddu bala'a? O Prophet, which people are most severely tested? Then the Prophet astonishingly told them that the people who are mostly severely tested are the Prophets, those whom Allah loves the most. And then the Prophet said, Thummal amthalu fal amthal. And then the next best, and then the next best. So if you are the best among the slaves of Allah, if you are the best among Allah's bondmen, 
movement, those who are mimicking the prophets, those who are following the footsteps of the righteous people, the more you are committed in this deen, the prophet said, the more you are tested. He said, a person will be tested according to his or her religious commitment. If you are religiously committed, Allah will test you the most. And then the Prophet said, A man or a person is tested according to his religious commitment. So my brother, if you are religiously committed, my sister, if you are religiously committed, the more committed you are, the more trials you will go through because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for you. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, problems, issues, catastrophes, turmoils, tests, and air of Maryland color will never leave the believer alone. This will never leave you, my brother, if you are truly committed and you are a true believer and a Muslim who is committed, the more you are committed, the more you go through turmoils. But guess what? Here is the good news. The Prophet Wasallam said those problems and turmoils will leave you walking on the face of this earth sinless. You will be walking on the face of this earth without even a single sin on you. So if your judgment is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should test those who are drinking alcohol, those who bring in singers in their countries and cursing God, and those who are trying to oppose the deen, why the enemies of Islam Allah is leaving them alone? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just told you, those their sins are not to be wiped. It's just piling up. Allah doesn't love them that much to give them this test. Although we don't pray to receive those tests, but when they come, we pray that Allah will endow us with hearts that will be even bigger than the problems that we will go through. So we pray not to go through these turmoils, but in case a believer is tested, if you welcome it with patience, your reward with Allah, number one, is that you will be walking on the face of this earth without a sin. And number two, those who die in what people call natural disaster, the believers, Allah said, we take them as shuhada. Allah is sending all these natural disasters as you call them, but to the believer, they are not natural disaster. They are nothing but divine and by alert. That alert the believer that there's some things going on around you. Just keep yourself together. If Allah calls you in them, you are shaheed and if a person survives them and welcomes them with patience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you walk on the face of this earth without any sin on you so imagine our brothers in Morocco and imagine our brothers in Libya and our brothers in Afghanistan and our brothers in Indonesia and our brothers in Pakistan and our brothers in Brazil and our brothers right here those who suffered and struggled in Maui over there in Hawaii Allah subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, I will leave you walking on the face of earth after your survival without any sin on you at all. So this is a glad tidings for the survivors that Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had wiped your sins away. And those of your families that Allah took, they are all shuhada. Those who are singing and those who are cursing God and those who are in the nightclub and those who are fornicating and those who are indulging in that which angers Allah. Earthquake will not come to those people that easy flood will not inundate those people easily and per your judgment if they are to be wiped do you think they are the people worthy of shahada they are people worthy of being shahada worthy of being modest when they are already plunging in sins no my brother allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asma'ul husna and annu'utul ula most beautiful names and the best attributes ever politician is not one of them it is politician that will come to you with what you want what your heart desire so that you can keep them in their offices you did not elect allah to be allah you did not elect allah to be the creator of the heavens and the earth so he will not do what you want him to do if he will do what you want him to do then you are co-equal to him where the truth to follow their own whims and desires the heavens and the earth will have what 
cleft asunder. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the politician, brother. He does his things with hikmah, with ultimate wisdom, because he knows what is good for people. So don't look and say, look at those poor people and act like you're the most merciful. No, you ain't. I'm not. We not. The most merciful is the one that visits us with whatever he sees fit. We pray for our people in Libya. We pray for our families in Morocco. We pray for our families in Brazil. We pray for our people in Afghan. We pray for our families in India. We pray for our families in Indonesia. And we pray for our families in Afghanistan. And finally, we pray for our families in Maui, Hawaii. We pray that Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from all these natural disasters and the places where people look up to in the Muslim world we pray for them we pray for their leadership we hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide their leadership we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will endow their leadership to do that which is pleasing to them and we hope and pray that Allah will give them the life that will allow them to wake up to see the light of a deen and never curse them because in cursing a leader there's no benefit in it but your prayer if Allah answers your prayer for a leader it's better for him and it's better for his country and remember those places where you see some things that a believer doesn't want you may see some things and say why are these things happening in Saudi why are they happening in Egypt why are they happening in Morocco why all of this in in the Muslim land why all of this Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata Allah knows where he places his messengership he knows knows where he places his own things. He knows where he places his own affairs and he knows the country that deserves it. We hope and pray that the scholars that are behind bars, may Allah bring them out. And the righteous people that are left behind bars, we hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emancipate them and rescue them all, all around the world. Remain blessed. Praise be to Almighty Allah at the beginning of our speech and at the end of it. Oh Allah, if I have said something displeasing to you, please forgive me. Because this body cannot handle your punishment and my heart is not that strong to entertain your wrath. Remain blessed. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.